Over 2 million AstraZeneca doses have been administered in Canada, including for the Prime Minister. And of those administered, 28 suspected cases of the rare blood clot have been reported and three people have died. Now several provinces have decided to stop using the AstraZeneca vaccine uh, for the first dose appointments. Some have cited supply issues as the cause, but others have cited the safety signal, the risks associated with these rare blood clots. But Canada is set to receive 600, or we did receive 655,000 AstraZeneca doses, and there's an urgent need to vaccinate as many people as possible. So is Canada making a mistake by essentially backing away from giving out first doses of AstraZeneca? Uh, the same vaccine, we should say, that reopened the UK fundamentally. Is Canada overstating the risks, or are the mRNA vaccines really a better preferred option. Joining us now is the man who's responsible for overseeing the development of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, Sir John Bell, who's the Regis Professor of Medicine at Oxford University. And welcome back to the program, sir. Um, you've seen what's happening in Canada. There's, a, there's frankly a move away from AstraZeneca for all sorts of reasons. Uh, and many Canadians are deeply concerned that the risks no longer, or the rewards no longer outweigh the risks given the blood clot. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, so look, I, I don't want to, um, I, I, I don't want to um, comment on the decisions that Canadians and Canadian provinces take. I think it's really up to them to decide what vaccines they're going to want to use and how. But I think it's probably worth remembering that there's still lots of things we don't know about this pandemic. Uh, there's still lots of things we don't know about both vaccines. There are lots of things we don't really understand about the clotting issues associated with the AstraZeneca vaccines. And there are things like the, uh, the signal of myocarditis from the Pfizer vaccine, which, as you know, was found in 60 people under the age of 30 in Israel with two deaths. So we're in a, we're in a situation where we're learning as we go along, and, and there are very few absolutes about what's going to happen and what isn't going to happen. And I, I think the argument for continuing to use the AstraZeneca vaccine, cert certainly in populations of people over the age of 40 or 50, is that the incidence of these rare events, they are very, very rare. The Indian strain has now arrived in the UK. It will arrive in Canada if it hasn't already probably already has and at my last look you guys are 3.6 percent vaccinated with two doses so just wait for that one to rip through the Canadian population and then the problems you've had with these very rare clotting events will look pretty insignificant next to oh, that. Okay so John but this is interesting because there's a lot of talk about Canadians who say, I don't want my second dose of this now. I want, I'm going to wait. There's a study in the UK, and we keep hearing from public health officials that there's positive signals about mixing and matching. So if you're worried about AstraZeneca, don't worry about it. Your next shot, we're going to be flooded with Pfizer and Moderna. You can mix and match and take your second shot of Pfizer and Moderna. So we may not need all the, the 20 million AstraZeneca doses that we've ordered. What's your response to that? Well, I think that reflects the whole Canadian approach to vaccines generally, and that is acting on a lot of hearsay, not facts. So we're doing the heterologous boosting experiment here in Oxford, 800 people in an arm, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Astra Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Pfizer. And our experience to date is that it produces pretty severe reactogenicity, so severe that we don't think that's going to be viable. And by that, I mean, you get your second dose, if you flip it over, you'll get really sick. So I would not advise that. Uh, and the second dose of AstraZeneca, which we've now put in to many, many millions of people who had a first of a dose of AstraZeneca, we're not sure we can even find a single case of clotting problems. So, you know, bad idea. This needs to be data driven. Okay, uh, sorry. I this is really interesting because a lot of people are investing a lot of hope in this, that, that soon that our health officials are going to say, you know, mixing and matching is possible. And we've also heard it may even be better. One shot of AstraZeneca, one shot of Pfizer. You're doing the testing. I just want people to understand, you're saying as someone who's looking at that, it would be, if you're one of the 2 million Canadians who got AstraZeneca, you're saying take the second dose? Much better to take the second dose. Much better to take the second dose. The only reason to think about heterologous boosting, and to be clear, 
we don't have all the all the immunogenicity, all the the antibody data from those studies because they're big. We're doing them in 800 people each, so it takes a, a while to get them done. But at the moment, I don't think we would be uh, jumping up and down enthusiastically because the reactogenicity, the 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 effect you have with the second dose, either way you flip it, is pretty severe. And uh, I and not only that, but you shouldn't with a second dose of AstraZeneca, you shouldn't need. Uh, a Pfizer dose, your um, antigen reactivity levels will be super high. You'll be fine against all right. the standard variants. And if you have a third dose of AstraZeneca, your antibody levels go even higher, much higher than they do with Pfizer. So, and, and you don't get any clotting problems that we see after you've had the first dose. So, you know, come on, guys. But to either do the experiments yourself or listen to people who do them. Dr. Bell, I mean, I can see the frustration here because a lot of people now, like we are going to get a lot of Pfizer, but we still have ordered a lot of AstraZeneca. A lot of people are saying when they want a first dose, I don't even want to take the, the, the risk of AstraZeneca. I'll wait and get my first dose of Pfizer. Uh, in other words, they just, we in Canada, they're literally called the preferred vaccines. Our science officials say the mRNAs are the, quote, preferred vaccines over the viral vectors. I just... Your response to what kind of messaging that sends at a critical time? Yeah, so, you know, look, if, if you've got stacks of Pfizer vaccine and stacks of Moderna vaccine and you want to take those vaccines, those are very good vaccines. I'm not disputing that at all. If, however, you've got supply chain issues, which I suspect you do, the most important thing at this moment in time is to get everybody a first dose of vaccine. That's what we did in the UK. We really pushed the boat out. We're now 60% of people have had a single dose, probably more now. And, and actually, we, 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 we've had no deaths now for many days. There's no hospital admissions. Uh, uh, and indeed, even though we've got Indian cases, we're not having too much trouble. So you guys are sitting at 3.6% of the population with one dose. Yeah, unless you've got with two doses of mRNA vaccine sitting in the back room, you need to get on and vaccinate people with any one of the four good vaccines, Janssen and Janssen, sorry, Johnson and Johnson, AstraZeneca, Moderna, or Pfizer. And all, all this messing around is going to cost lives. This is a, it's a public health decision. It's not, you know, it's not some academic game. It's a public health decision. Let the public health doctors make a decision. We, just for the record, Canada has about 50% of its adult population, 18 and up, one dose. But you're right, uh, less than 4% of Canadians have got the, the two dose. Uh, just final thing. So if Canada has now, they're, they're our, our top health official on Friday was speculating, look, if we don't use, if we don't need all these extra AstraZeneca that we've ordered, we may not even want them. Just again, I know there's an Indian variant that has arrived in Canada. We know that. Are, are you saying it would be prudent to whatever vaccine you can get, still get as many people, Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, Johnson, just go for, uh, as fast as possible? Is that, would that be your suggestion? Yeah, look, it, uh, this is a sort of race against time. And the, in, the Indian variants, the two known Indian variants that are causing so much trouble in India are much more infectious than the Kent variant. Uh, and they transmit much faster. So once it takes hold, it's going to move really quickly. So there's no time to waste getting people a second dose. And, and what, what we can see is that the more people with a second dose, the more people will have antibody levels that are high enough to deal with the Indian variant, which is where we are at the moment in the UK. Um, so my advice is get people two doses as fast as you can and hunker down. So for the Canadians to be out thinking about whether they should have a second dose, you know, eating marshmallows or on the campfire looks a bit silly to me, frankly. And look, if you guys have got 70 million doses of Pfizer sitting around and you can whack them into people quickly, good luck to you. I have no problem with that at all. I just think this game of waiting around for the perfect solution while there's a massive pandemic coming in your direction, that does not look smart to me. Uh, Sir John Bell, it's always a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank nice. you, sir. Nice to talk. See you soon.